Hey everyone, welcome back with a new lecture with Quality Control Quality Assurance Training Course. In the previous lecture, I have explained the matrix effect. And what can you do if there is effect from the matrix interferences on target analytes by enhancement or suppression? And the first solution was to prepare matrix, match it calibration curve, to prepare your calibration but on the matrix itself. And that is very difficult and mostly will not be highly accurate like preparing the calibration standards on the solvent. And the second solution, internal standard. Internal standard is a very important solution and very easy solution and also will give you high accurate results. Internal standard, which is known amount of a standard, known amount of a standard, chemical, one compound, which is different than the analyte of interest, not same like the analyte of interest in the chemical structure and in everything, and also cannot react or interfere with the analyte of interest. Interest. So non amount of standard of different analyte than the target analyte, added to the blank spike sample samples or routine samples and also calibration or verification standards. So it will be added to all samples that you have from the beginning till the end. Internal standard will be added on the same amount. You will add as example two, uh, 200 mic uh, microliter, you will add 200 microliter for all of them. So same amount will be added to all of your samples, even blank spike sample, even quality control samples. And it has a different chemical, as I said, as I said, it has a different chemical structure than the analyte and should not react or interfere with the analyte of interest and also should not contain any of impurities that may react with the analyte of interest. And as you see in this chromatogram, resolution should be very high. There should be a separation, a high separation or resolution between the internal standard and the analyte of interest. So to, so to be easily distinguished between both of them. So chromatogram should be like this, should be resolution should be high between the internal standard and all of your analytes. And also internal standard should be constant during the whole procedure. The whole run will not be affected by any solvent or any other chemical will be added. And the internal standard is specific for each compound or each group. So you, you should select this internal standard based on the target analyte you analyze. And as I said that it compensates for matrix effect. It can help to remove the effect of matrix on your target analyte. So internal standard can compensate for systematic and random effect, for both systematic and random effects. During the whole procedure, if you add internal standard from the beginning till the end, any change will happen or any effect will happen on the target analyte also will happen to the internal standard or the opposite. If any change happen to the internal standard also or any effect happen to the uh, internal standard also will happen to the target analytes. So the relation between both of them will get a number and you will see that from the calibration curve. The calibration curve in this case not like the other case without the internal standard response here equal to AX divided by A internal standard. The area of the analyte divided by the area of internal standard. Relation between this area and concentration of the analyte divided by the concentration of internal standard. So the slope in this case will be equal to this area divided by this concentration as here in this equation. And this slope equal to the response factor. This response factor will not change because any effect, as I said, happen to the internal standard during the whole run, whether systematic or random effect, as I explained before the systematic and random errors, any effect or any error will happen to the internal standard also will be for same for the analyte. So response factor at the end will not change. And this response factor will be used to quantify the concentration of unknown target analytes. So internal standard will compensate for all effects during the whole run. As here in this example, we have the solution, first solution which contain this concentration of uh, the analyte 52.4 and the area for this concentration was 0.644. Internal standard contain this concentration and the area of internal standard equal to one. 
For the second solution contain the target analyte unknown target analyte. So we need to know this concentration. The area was 1.093. Internal standard 742. Uh, and the area of the internal standard, this internal standard equal to 1. As you know from the calibration, we have response against the concentration. In the normal cases, we have response, the area divided by the concentration will give you the slope. But in case of internal standard, area of analyte divided by the area of internal standard against concentration of analyte uh, divided by the concentration of internal standard and both of them will be divided then you will get the slope which is the response factor this response factor as i said will not change any effect will happen to the internal standard will be also same for the uh, analyte so the response factor will not change will be constant will be constant if there is any effect systematic from the matrix effect or random from any uh, effect during the whole run or from the instrument fluctuation or any effect happen during the run of the samples on the instrument so first we will use this equation the equation uh, area of the analyte analyte one divided by for the first solution divided by the concentration of the first solution equal to response factor multiplied to the area of internal standard divided by the concentration of internal standard to get the response factor this is the calibration that you did you did the calibration to calculate the response factor or, or slope that will be used after that to quantify all of your samples so if we got the response factor which is equal to 0.478 this 0.478 will be used to quantify all of your unknown target analytes in the samples so in this solution contain unknown target analyte so the a, a same equation used area of uh, analyte divided by the concentration which is unknown equal to 0.478 multiplied to one internal standard uh, area divided by the concentration of the second solution internal standard the second internal standard then you will calculate the concentration of unknown equal to one this number so uh, now you got the concentration of unknown target analytes without any effect you compensate all effects during the whole procedure from the beginning till the end even during the run on the instrument because you any effect as i said uh, will or will be on the internal standard will be same on the analyte so response factor will be constant at the end and that response factor used to quantify the concentration of unknown target analytes that was the end of our lecture for today in the next lecture i will explain the third solution to prepare the standard matrix sample which is the easiest way thank you and see you in the next lecture